and I have made it to the Greene County Historical Society. Uh, just outside of the main part of Waynesburg, Pennsylvania. And we're about to go meet with the owner of the Historical Society and he is gonna maybe give us some insight onto the house that we're investigating in Mount Morris. Places uh never been in here. This is amazing. All right. Go on in. Awesome. He's right in there. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. How are we doing? Good. How are you guys? Pretty good. This is an amazing building you have here, man. Oh, thank you. Uh, we like it mansion living in houses like this buildings like this well it started out as that then it became a county home oh really yeah nice yeah it's pretty big it's around thirty-five thousand square feet we've got 52 rooms three basements and an attic jeez i've never been here and i'm just right down the road in morgantown oh yeah yeah, yeah Born and raised. west finley and i've never been here really <laughs> <laughs> i like your friend over there just hanging in the back oh thank you that's actually it's the only thing in this room that's not mine <laughs> Uh, you guys can grab some chairs if you want. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. So, what have you guys been able to dig up on this house so far? This is our basic timeline that I'm, I haven't constructed yet. But mm -hmm. This is the uh, written format. The current owner is back to some like things we have to check out. Do you have any idea when it was built? No. Okay. That's what we're that's what we're kind of like weary about right now. Let's see, I think there is a section from Mount Morris. They won't tell you when it was built, but if it's this book was done in 1953, and it's actually a reprint of something that was done in 1918. And if it was there in 1918, it would be in here. Yeah, this is a. Uh, a fire insurance map. Well, there is a reported fire before that house. And they said it was in the fifties. Uh-huh. So what street's it on about Morris? Main Street. Main Street. And it's like right on the corner. Oh, this one does not have Mount Morris in it. Oh that's Oh yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Here we go. Oh, perfect. Okay. This is Mount Morris. Um, See, there's Locust. Locust going down. Main. Okay. There's Main Street. So we're at on Main Street. Down at the bottom, going towards Dunkard, across the creek. So the address was 110 Main. Let me bring it up on Google Maps. Here, I got it up. Okay. 
So I have it pinned in the location. There's the Dunkard Bridge down there. So it was like up and then like right at the, right at that corner, there, there's like a store across the street from it. This has all the alley names cut off of it. <laughs> Okay, now that's Rogersville. It's definitely looking like the only page. Yeah, Mount Morris had only one page, so. Okay. It's not that big, but there's the Dunkard Bridge down there. Let's see if we can angle it a little bit. So, yeah, that's that's the Dunkard Bridge, right? Where, um, it looks like it's going a weird direction. Yeah, it looks like. This is an inset, so oh, I don't. Okay. Th this isn't necessarily in conjunction with the map. Yeah. So this is probably what we're looking at, because Main Street goes down, and then the alley. I think it's like Apple is. I think this is Apple Alley going down. Oh, okay. Here's Walnut Street. There's Walnut Street, Main Street. So actually, we need to be. Like that, Walnut Street, Main Street. I think this is your house right here, honestly. That kind of... Yeah, because that building looks like it would be that building there. Well, I know right next, the one across the street would have had one right next to it that they tore down later on. Uh-huh. It's between that and that church. Yeah, because that... This like really thin elongated building, that was the church that the pastor could look at from his window across the street. Oh, this is it, because there's the church. Okay, so, so oh, you have found it. Parcel five, it looks like, right here on the corner. Yeah, that one. And then he could look directly across the street at his church, Miracle Mission. Okay, well this indicates that this, this was here in 1918 then. Because like I said, these are, I was wrong when I said the 50s. These were done in 1931. Okay. But these are based off of 1918 maps. And you can see where they had to make changes. They literally just glued. The pieces over. Yeah, so if this was originally done in 1918, so you know it was there in 1918. Okay. Because we have it on this map. Yeah, that's, I think that's definitely your building. So we know it was there in 1918. Yeah, and then there's this like square Big wraparound porch is yep. that. Okay, so cool. So now we have a parcel number. It's definitely there in 1918. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's big news right there for us. At least we have 1918 in there. Of course, now these old books are indexed, so you just have to right, for flip through pages, yeah. Honestly, this is the type of stuff I'd rather be doing than looking on the internet because it's tangible. It's like, yes. Yeah, like, I want to be able to feel the map, not scroll over it. And not every Joe Schmo can change it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, internet research is bad. And that's like most of where this has come from, but coming up here, meeting with you, trying to like corroborate information, that's like, that's the big thing for us. Yeah. Now I do know for a fact that Mount Morris has a map in here. It's just a matter of Fine. And would it be possible if I could just take some like top down shots? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, awesome, awesome. Absolutely. Maybe get some new uh some new <coughs> intro images for season two. Ah, here we go. We're stuck in the corner. Remember this house here, Walnut and Maine, and then Washington. So Washington, next alley up. So that would be that. We would be looking at this area right here, and it was not here in 1876. But in 1876, the property was owned by a man named P. Donnelly. Okay. So, so we, we know it was built between 1876 and 1918. Probably around 1890. That's that's give or on, take. That's honestly, that's the time frame that I was I was talking about from. 1890 to like 1900s. Mm -hmm. And this was printed when? This is 1876. 1876. Yeah. 
Now, one thing we can look at. 1890 to 1900. That's what I was saying. Yeah, that, and as I recall what the house looked like, that's probably pretty accurate. Now, one thing we can look at, we can look in the business directory here in the back for Perry Township and see if this Donnelly fella had some sort of business there on the property or, you know, what he was engaged in. Owned by P. Donnelly, D-O-N-L-E-Y. Dude, so much information and we haven't even, like... I know, that's We've been flipping through like a couple bucks. Yeah. Okay, it doesn't look like he had any sort of business or anything like that on the property. Well, he must have because he owned a big property over here and there's something called Scales. Let me check this out again. Owned um, another property. And that was behind the house? Yeah, it would be, um, if you were looking at this map, it would be back here. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, it, on this map, it's it's this area right here across uh, this street. Oh, so he map. owned, actually it looked like he owned these three lots, that lot, and then this little, looks like it's one and three quarter acres right here. And then, like I said, I don't know what the scales mean. Right. So, I didn't see him at first. So it looks like that property had some sort of industrial use even as back as 1876. Now, of course, none of this is alphabetical either. <laughs> Gotta love it. Yeah. Dude, this is, I mean, this is the type of research I'd rather be doing, like I said, hit boots on the ground. <laughs> Easy on the t TV anchors, boots on the ground. Boots on the ground running. This is actually like, I'm so excited at this point. So much education right <laughs> yeah, like fuck, fuck a school book. Just put me in a historical society for a couple hours. Yeah, it's all right. Give me a haunted house and a historical society, and we're good. Call it a day. That's weird. He is definitely not in the business directory, but there are other Donleys. There's a D Donley, and then a J L and a William. That, that's that's that actually is a frequent occurrence. This definitely is a P Donley. And then back here, you only have a D and a William and a JL. I'm wondering if the P and the D are the same guy. Yeah. And somewhere they just got one of the letters wrong. Because the guy that did this, J.A. Caldwell, he wasn't a local. Yeah. So, you know, people would tell him a name and then he'd write it down. If he got it wrong, he just got it wrong. See, it's calling these guys, all these Donnelly guys, it's calling them farmers, but they definitely had some sort of industry here. Unless this was, this could have been, the scales, this could have been where they were like, uh, anything they got off their farms, it could be where they were like processing that and selling it, that sort of thing. Gotcha. Um, in fact, I'd say these quote unquote scales probably have something to do with livestock. Right. So. So where they're scaling the weight of the animal. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I would certainly make that, that's a, a kind of a logical leap. Yeah, he, this this Donnelly guy, he had a very, very large farm right here outside of Mount Morris. Right in that, well not very large, but that looks like it either says 57 or 37 acres. I mean, pretty decent well, type of land for... So we're gonna question how far outside Mount Morris? Not very, not, not very, literally just on the other side of the creek. Like, here's Mount Morris, here's his farm. So it's literally just... Well, wonder if Tyler and Farah own the same properties as this guy because they own another farmhouse five minutes away. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, it looks like like if you would leave uh, Mount Morris on Big Shannon Run, it would be... Back towards there? Yeah. <laughs> Dude. Okay, so... Yeah, when we first met Tyler and Farah, the, you know, they told us that they had another house that was like right across the way. Mm -hmm. Wonder if this P. Donnelly, D. Donnelly guy. That's possible. That's it's certainly fun. possible. Because the ironic part is they're saying that's haunted too. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> but there's, a, there's a cabin that they, after dark, they don't go mm -hmm. to because they start experiencing weird things out in the cabin. Now the farm, you know, not so much, but that that cabin on that farm property, and I wonder if this is like the same location. Yeah, like it very well could be because it's literally right outside of town. 
on Big Shannon. Uh, let me, before you completely consider that gospel truth, let me verify that I'm right when I say it's Big Shannon. Okay, no, don't call that Big Shannon Run. There's Little Shannon Run, there's Big Shannon Run. So, th these are, this is Little Shannon Run, that's Big Shannon Run. So, you're not even that far out of Mount Morris yet. Like, this is, uh, like, if you're coming in from the south, yeah, that's yeah, the road yeah. that comes in, then you come up, and this, it's, if you know where the big uh, Assembly of God church is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably right across the street from that is where this coffee's looking like it's gonna be. That's, I'm pretty sure that's like the road that Tyler and Farrell live on. Because I know that, I know that church. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like, like, that church would be kind of right in here. It's, this doesn't show property lines really well, so you don't know exactly where it is, but yeah, you're right in the neighborhood of that church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. At the end of, I'm gonna say end of Big Shannon. I'll be like across from the giant church. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Now, would there be any possible way to get records uh, if there was like a house fire or anything on that property? Okay, so that's going to be a difficult thing to do. Okay. Um, do you have any rough idea? In the fifties. In the fifties. Yes. You can't narrow it down any more than that. Not that I can find. No, unless, no, on, no, on my notes it just says house fire 50s, but we haven't been able to pin a date. Um, I can't remember if it, 52 or 57 mm -hmm. is like the two numbers I think I remember seeing, but I mean, house fires happen all the damn time. See, the only way you would really be able to find anything about that, and it's not going to be easy work, and we don't have the materials here. Right. However, um, if you contact Cornerstone Genealogical Society, they're over in Waynesburg. They're, they're kind of closed right now for right. COVID. However, if you would give them a call, I know they have been like letting people in that have like specific things they want to research, but you'd probably have to make an appointment. Right. Um, they have lots and lots and lots of newspapers on microfilm. Ooh. That, that's, that's where you would, probably about the only place that you would find anything like that. Going through and sifting. Yeah, and, and like you'd literally, like if you don't know, the year ideally you'd want to know a month. Yeah. You know, because otherwise you're going to have to sit and scroll through reel after reel after reel of microfilm. And probably in multiple newspapers because Wayne's, well this, the whole county, um, there were always a few different newspapers that serviced here. There was generally a Republican newspaper, a Democrat newspaper, and an independent newspaper. And if you were a Republican and something happened, it was in the Republican. If you were a Democrat, it was in the Democrat. So, you know, if you don't know their party affiliation, <laughs> it might be that you might have to search through both. I doubt I'll have anything on my computer on him. It looks like that would be Patrick Donnelly, who was born in 1805 and died in 1891, who was married to a woman by the name of Margaret Morris. And these are their kids. It doesn't look like I have a whole lot of information on the kids, but looks like most of them were born in the 1830s in Mount Morris. No kidding. So that's your Donnelly, Patrick Donnelly. Wait, where do I know that name? I don't know. I know that sounds very familiar. He, was he in that cemetery at the pit of those of? Well, if it's near that, it's probably very likely. Well, it would have been at the cemetery right behind that big church in Mount Morris. Cedar Grove? I, I, right I'd say it's very likely he's Morse, buried there. The Morris plot is that big one. In fact, yeah. we can even check and see if he is buried there. Alright, so the, <laughs> this is, this is, this is awesome, dude. So this is way more than I thought we were going to find. Me too. Because this house has been a complete mystery to us. It's not a mystery so much anymore. Well, and, and his death in 1891 is probably a good indication because what I would look for is to see if when he died the property was sold and whoever bought the property in 1891 is probably whoever bought that house. We have Patrick Donnelly. The original owner. Okay, he's not buried in the cemetery by the big church. 
It looks like he's buried in the cemetery, um, the yellow brick church right there. Right there. Town. That's the one I was by. Okay, yeah, yeah. it looks like he is buried. Corner plot down by the road. Yeah, that big one, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's the Morris family plot. Yeah, it looks like, oh, wait a second. Okay, now he has kids there. Hold on. Wow. Let me see. I don't even make sense if it's the Morris family plot. Yeah, he definitely has kids buried there, but I didn't see his name in that list. Buried at the Mount Morris Church. Ah, oh, he is buried there. Yeah, he is buried there. And on his headstone, it actually has the Honorable Patrick Morris, so he must have been a lawyer, possibly even a judge. Right. I'm looking at this upside down. I now I can't find it. Ah, oh, yeah, right there. There he is. And then that is. The Mount Morris Cemetery, the old one, that's the one by the Methodist Church. Oh, that's the big yellow one on the corner. Right? Yeah. Yep. Perfect. So, and it looks like there's a bunch of Donnellys there, and it looks like they're all his relatives in some way, shape, or form. But yeah, I would definitely, like, with him dying in 1891, that's pretty close to about the time that house was probably built. So, whoever, when he died, whoever acquired that property, probably. which it could have even been one of his kids. Yeah. Um, but that's probably, the house was probably built 1892, 1893. Because it's like the deed goes back and just drops off, like it don't exist. Yeah. Yeah, and to access where the companies had it, you have to go into uh, the land parcel thing, and then it only goes, like like Randy was saying, it only goes back so far with the residential, and then you have to go in it a little bit deeper somehow, and you can figure out uh, when the companies owned it. But before that, that's what we're having some like yeah. real issues with. Um, honestly, Kind of doing it from the opposite direction might work. It may be a benefit to you guys to go to the courthouse and see if you can find his will. Ooh. Because if he left the property to a kid. It would be in his will and testament. Yeah. And you should also, you'd probably have better luck finding deeds there as well. Is there a way to print off his information or? Here, yes, there is a way to do that. Okay, awesome. Oh, let me, I, let me check the printer. It awesome. just beat. Awesome, thank you. This case just keeps getting deeper and deeper. The more that we like look into it and just being here at the Historical Society, getting all this information, um, really thankful for Matt and the Historical Society here in Waynesburg at the Greene County Historical Society. This is, uh, this is big. This is like a, a lead in the case that we've been looking for. And uh, I don't know, we're just gonna see where it goes. Hopefully, you know, we have a little bit more information now to go into the next investigation, ask certain questions. Maybe we can contact um, one of these lives that passed on, figure out who exactly is causing the hauntings or what could have been done on this property to have these hauntings come about. Dude, I really appreciate everything. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah, Matt, uh, this was absolutely groundbreaking for us. Excellent, excellent. So uh, this is more than just like your normal paranormal show. This is like, uh, I don't know, man. I'm trying to solve something that I didn't even know I was supposed to solve. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing it, but you know, we're here and we're doing it. So yep. I can't thank you enough, man. Oh, my pleasure. Dude, appreciate you so my much. My pleasure.